Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube, and in this video, we're talking all about time. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Stay tuned. Okay, so most of the videos and blog posts you see when it comes to data modeling, it's always a date dimension or a calendar dimension. But I've noticed in a couple of videos I've done where I've discussed date or calendar um, that there are some comments and questions about, hey Patrick, what about time? And so I go, well, a day is a time, a year is a time. Go, no, 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 no. Not days and years and quarters. We're talking about what about hours, minutes, and seconds? How do you handle that? And I was like, hmm, never done anything on that, but you absolutely can do it. And so that's why I decided to do this video. So in this, in this video, wait, 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 wait. You guys know what I like to do. Instead of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop. Okay. So how do you handle time? The first thing you need is you need to make sure that you have some transactional value or role like your fact table needs to have time associated with it. And so in this example, I have some crimes data and um, you can see when I initially imported the data that the date and the times concatenated into one single field. The first thing you need to do, right? The very first thing you need to do is separate the date and the time. And you should do this as a best practice anyway. It helps with the compression in the mob. Okay. And so you can see in the next step, I split these two out and I have an actual date and I have an actual time. And then I change the data types, the date and time. Okay. If you don't have any time, right? Like hour down to the hour, down to the minute, down to the second, there's not really much you can do with it. Okay. So if you're not capturing it, you need to start capturing if you want to look at things that granular. Okay. So I have date and time. So this, this is specifically, you know, the date and the time that a crime happened. Okay. So I split these out and I have my date and my time. All right. So once you do that, I go back over here to my data model. And on that table, we'll come back to this in just a second, on my crime table, I create a time key. And so you can see right here in the time key, basically all it is, is I'm using um, format to extract out the hour and the minute, right? And so I'm gonna establish a relationship between this time key at the minute level, the grain that I'm looking for it is down to the minute. You can go down to the second if you want to also, but I don't need to know the second a crime happened. I just need to know around the minute, okay? All right, so that's the first thing you need to do. On that transactional table, on that fact table, you need to have a key, just like any other dimension, right? You, it's a unique key that will associate that row with my dimension, like my date key or my department key or my sales uh, my category, sales category, whatever it is. Treat the, sign, the time the sign. To treat the time just like any other dimension. So I created a key. I have a key down to the minute level. And then I wrote a little DAX to create a timetable. And so in my timetable, I'm using a generate series because I want to look at every minute in every day. There's 1,440 minutes in every day. And then I'm using a function call time. It accepts an hour, a minute, and a second and it produces a daytime value. And in this case, I'm using my the value that's generated from my series and I'm passing it in as the hour. If that number that you pass into the hour exceeds 59, it automatically returns hour and minute. And that's what I need, right? I need the hour and the minute. Um, and so then I create my time key. This should look familiar. This looks just like the time key that was created back on my fact table. And then I'm doing some other formatting to return the actual time, just looking at the hour, extended hour. It's the hour and a.m. or p.m. And I'm just returning a.m. p.m. and a minute, right? Okay, so now I have my timetable created. All I need to do now is go over to my model view and establish a relationship between, let's see, let's, let's extend this out a little bit, between the time key in my transactional table or my fact table and the time key in my timetable, all right? So each row in that timetable represents one minute of each day, okay? So I have a complete list of every minute of each day, a.m. and p.m., okay? So once I do that, now I've created some measures to do some aggregations, the number of times and things like that. I can build out a report that looks like this. So on my overview report, 
I can see every crime that happened in every minute, I mean every hour of the day. If I wanna drill down and look at every minute, I can do that also. That'll get kind of messy, but you can do it. Um, if I wanna look at crime for a particular day, and so on the, today, the 21st, I can see how the crimes happen, right? This is just simulated data. If I wanna look at AM crimes or PM crimes, I can absolutely do that just so easily now that I have this relationship and have this timetable and you can also do some really cool things you know using your time like look at the last hour the last six hours and things like that so if you take that take a look at my time slice page right I'm looking at today right and I can say let me see crimes that happened this hour so it's 9 a.m. you can see these are the crimes that's happened so far in within 9 a.m. there's six of them if I want to look at the crimes that happened in the last hour there were 14 crimes that happened at 8 a.m. and then if I want to look at the crime that crimes that happened in the last six hours, I can also do that. And you can you can adjust and modify this to meet whatever your requirements are. You can modify the DAX script to include, include additional columns, whatever you want to do. All right. So I'm curious, how you guys solved this before? Are you doing this? Are you dealing with time? If you got any questions, comments, you know what to do. Post it in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting a guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Slow down.